Well, good morning. It is Saturday in Jackson and West Tennessee, and it's time to get the hammers and tools out and get some instruction on how to use them. Here is West Tennessee's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jim. How in the world are you? I'm good, man. It is nice outside. There's no humidite to have to suck in when you breathe. Man, I'm, I feel good this morning. I almost went back inside and got my long pants on. <laughs> no, I noticed you had but, your shorties on. But I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah ball, but I didn't. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be, I think, in the uh, upper 70s most uh, n- next two or three days and then back in the low 80s. So, you know, fall fall begins Tuesday. Really? Officially, yeah, the 22nd of September. So I can't wait. Yeah, me too. Just bring it on. Bring it on by the truckloads. It, it, it is. It's just uh, I've had enough of this extreme everything. Yeah, yeah. So Everything's just, been extreme this year. It has. It has. I, I, I thought about you the other day. I saw a picture on Facebook or somewhere of a little little Pomeranian dog that looked like it had just been blown dry. His oh, yeah. His hair was going in 14 different directions, and his eyeballs had kind of run out on a stem. Sort of looking. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> squeezed it. Yeah. And some, <laughs> the caption said, my impression of 2020. I said, yes, amen. Oh, man. It's, yeah. Mm. What a year. We'll yeah. Throw that yeah. in the dumpster real quick. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This is Tricks of the Trade, and we're going to take your calls today. As we always say, John had rather talk to you than to hear himself babble all morning long. So we're going to do that. It is 731-891-6161. Text line is open at 731-410-7560. And uh, we got a text coming in uh, already this morning. It says, good morning. Is this COVID talk of West Tennessee? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It was. It's not going to be any, any longer. So uh, just shoot us, uh, shoot us a question and we'll, we'll jump right <laughs> in. We, we answered that one far too easy. Yes, yes, it is. I'm afraid it is. So give us a call. We're live on Facebook right now, on Facebook Live, y'all.com, and News Talk West Tennessee and News Talk Jackson on Facebook, and it'll be on YouTube a little bit later this morning. You know, this COVID thing that, that, that we've been uh, going through, you know, has just wreaked havoc in, in our industry. Yeah. And like, no nobody's starting new houses right now because lumber, lumber and material, yeah. it, it's sky high. Yeah. I used to get a piece of half inch OSB plywood for around ten bucks. Mm-hmm. They're twenty five right now. Really? Yeah. I mean, framing lumber's gone up about sixty, seventy percent. And you know, then you you wear yourself out during the day, and you got to home go home and start cooking, and and uh, we got to get these this economy going. As I was telling yeah. you this morning, I had yeah. figured out. Yeah how to get the economy started, get the restaurant business back up the way it needs to be. Everybody in the business is listening right now. That's right, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go have a little one-on-one with Clark when this is over. There you go. So, you know, I, I went on a rage Saturday on your show, or Friday Thursday, on your show. Thursday, because Yeah, yeah Thursday. There you That's go. when it was. See, I'm still all worked up yeah. about it. <laughs> and and, and I, have, I have, you know, I ventured out into the uh, COVID world and went to a restaurant. And I had my mask on. Right. And and I've gotten used to masks. I'm, they're, they're okay, you know. And, and uh, I don't have a problem with keeping six feet away from everybody. And I don't have a problem washing my hands, yeah. you know, once or twice a day or whatever you're supposed to do. I, <laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, but the thing that has just gotten all over me is you can't get salt and pepper. Yeah. In the restaurant. The rest so I figured it out. Yep. I figured it out. You remember back in the day when things were normal? Yep. You'd order your meal, mm-hmm. and and they'd bring it to you. Right. And uh, they'll still do that now. It may be in bits and pieces, <laughs> but they, you'll still get it now. But you can't get a salt and pepper shaker. And I don't like these little packets, and I've made that very clear. Right. But you remember back when things were normal, when, when the, the waiter would come around after he gave you your uh, – uh, your food yeah. and he'd come around here with this table leg yes and he'd want to <laughs> twist it over your foods uh-huh. fresh ground pepper yes you know and you'd say certainly yes. load it up put Fire it on my salad baby. put it. Yeah. they could do that again he could have his little gloves on mm-hmm. and his mask and his mask mm-hmm. and he could sprinkle some fresh ground pepper where you wanted it and yeah. you didn't have to fool with those little packets and they could do the same thing with salt 
Yeah, they I, got these well, little yeah, grinders. You grinder, yeah, with the yeah. sea salt and that sort of stuff. And yeah. you know it, and and I I tip very well, and I would tip very well for mm-hmm. some fresh ground pepper. Yes, and some fresh yes. ground salt, and nobody would be spreading cooties on my salt and pepper shaker. <laughs> this is true. So and to take it a step further, since it's difficult to to understand people with a mask on sometimes. Oh yeah. You know, a guy comes to the table with a table leg and he goes. You don't know what to answer. Yeah. But they could have printed on each each one of them salt and pepper question mark. And you wouldn't even have to talk to the guy. Man, that's good. Yeah, and then you just point where you want it. Yeah. And um, open your I'm, pocket and have him grind a little in the I'm pocket. Glad, I'm glad you agree with me, Jim. I'm, uh, hey, I'm, I'm on to this. We may, if we can, we can figure out a way to make some money on it, I'm really in. Well, this let it be known right now. You and I have just yep. brought back the restaurant industry. <laughs> yeah, we did. So it, it all goes back to salt and pepper shakers. Single-handedly. It says, tell John we are starting homes every week in Medina. Hey, they're getting lumber in Medina. Well, they... Well, they don't have it as bad up there, do they? Apparently not. It says uh, started six more last week. Lumber market about to turn, hopefully. Yeah, it is about to turn. I hope so. And because, uh, I mean, pretty soon you're going to be paying 50 bucks for a box of toothpicks if you keep it up, you know. It, but, yeah, that's good. They, they're, doing, they're doing good up in Medina. Oh, Medina, yep. Medina's a jumping little place, man. It I'm is. Guaranteed. I like that place up there. I do, they, too. Uh, I do, too. It's a very, and, very comfortable place to be. It is. It's quiet. You yep. know, it's homey. It's neighborhoods. Yep. You know, and... Uh, I did a lot of work up there in my former life, and, and uh, I really got to where I, where I like being up there. Oh, I do, too. You know, they got some good builders up there, too, and, yep. and uh, things are going well. Of course, they all need repairs from time to time. I'm going up there uh, <laughs> weekly. Yep. And uh, taking care of little minor things here and there. But uh, that's a good community. Well, I appreciate yeah. that text coming Yeah, thank in. you, Texter. We, we appreciate that. And uh, more, uh, more power to you up in, up in Medina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, soon Jackson's going to be a, a bedroom community of Medina, I think. Well, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Instead of the other way around. Phone number is uh, 731, as the two of the textures have already found out this morning. 731-891-6161. Text line where they're coming in is 410-7560. So give us a call this morning, and uh, we'll get things going. We were looking at your, at your list of things that we didn't get to last week, so you want to start with uh, with some of that today? Well, we got a few things we can talk about. You know, the, the things that we do talk about up here, we don't make these things up or get them out of magazines. They're just kind of real-life service calls with me, and yeah. and I deal with this stuff every day. And, and one of them in particular, and uh, people don't seem to understand sometimes the importance of this, but everybody has a little problem with water sometimes in the house. Maybe the toilet overflows or you kick a bucket of water over or something like that, and it gets mm-hmm. in your carpet. Right. And you go and uh, you start sucking everything up or throwing a towel over it and blotting it up, doing whatever you got to do. And uh, then in a couple of days, you start smelling something kind of bad. Mm-hmm. And and you can't figure it out. So here they go. You go out and you get you a box of, of, of bacon soda mm-hmm. and you sprinkle it over it, try to neutralize it. Or you might get you a bottle of Febreze and squirt that out. But the problem is when people are drying out carpets, the thing they don't understand is whether you know it or not, you need to get rid of that pad. Get rid of the pad and get you a fan out, you're all right because the longer that moisture stays uh, in the carpet or in the pad, it's going to start stinking. Yeah. And it's going to mildew, and then it's going to start bucking your floor, and it's going to smell like an old wet wash rag in there really bad really quick. So if you've had a discharge on your carpet, you know, pull the carpet back and take the wet pad out right. and then get you a fan and let it blow under the carpet uh, as, as big a fan as you can find. Just keep that air moving. And then when it, everything's dry, it's very inexpensive to get a piece of pad and put it back down and then pull your carpet back over it, stretch it tack it back in place and then you're all good and you don't have to worry about the stink bomb yeah that's true. going on in yeah, there that's so yeah. uh, huh interesting Ta- uh, you, you're talking about stretching it and tacking it tacking it back i i guess they they've been using tack strips to hold carpet in place for as long as i can remember that's it's, right I, they haven't found anything better than that i guess over the years well you got to have something because you got to stretch it yeah to keep the wrinkles out Right. Now, it's really kind of a new idea 
maybe the 40s is kind of when all this, because everybody had rugs back then. Oh, yeah, area you rugs. Know, yeah. Hardwood floor, and then you put your rug in the middle, and you'd bind the edges of a piece of carpet. Yeah. And uh, people used to do that with their stapler, like they had it on their desk. Yeah. You can uh, get your little Elmer's glue and some binding tape, and you will literally staple it to that piece of carpet or remnant or whatever, and then roll it back under, and then glue it with a little dab of Elmer's all the way around. And it, you know, that's big business now binding carpets, but people used to actually do it themselves, and uh, it does just as good a job. But people don't know how to do things anymore. Well, that's, that's I mean, it's too easy to pick up a phone call. You well, you know, I, <laughs> trust me, I know these. Well, things. Yeah, I, I'll have to admit, it's probably been 20 years since I bound one myself. Yeah, because they got machines that will do that. But the thing of it is, people don't know how to do it. Yep. I mean, yep. people are losing common sense and and trying to figure things out because we live in a disposable society. Boy, do we ever! Do and we uh, ever. it's cheaper to throw it away and be done with it. True, and. Uh, But, you know, sometimes, you know, and that brings up another little interesting thing here about carpet. If, if, if you and your wife went out today Mm -hmm. and you went to a local carpet store and you didn't have a clue what you wanted yep, and you walked over, you see rolls of carpet laying all over the floor and there, and you're going, what's the first thing you do? Unfortunately for me, I'm going to gravitate to the most expensive thing in the house. (laughs) (laughs) But I guess the first thing you do is feel of it. Yeah, you went over and rub your fingers in it. Yeah, that's exactly. And yeah. and uh, and and you th- and the reason behind that is you think the thicker is better. Well, those po- people in the white coat figured that out. Uh-huh. They're gonna trick you now. Mm-hmm. See, they take those little pieces of yarn and they fluff them up and they tease them, and they they make them. Yeah, they do. They they uh, they fluff them up to where you think you got more than you really have. So if your fingers, when you're feeling it, immediately go down to the backing, you don't have that much there. Because I learned this from uh, the, a lady uh, that worked with me many, many, many years ago, Miss mm-hmm. Jenny Simmons. Yeah, I remember her well. That's yeah. right. Well, Miss Jenny said, I don't care who's got carpet. I don't care what they tell you about it. I don't care what's on that price tag. All you're buying is yarn. The more yarn you have, the more expensive it's going to be. Now, if you buy cheap carpet, that's because you don't have as much yarn, and they fluffed it up. You know, they frazzled them little, yeah, them little things to make it look like you got more than what you really got. And that's when, when it gets wet or it's get in your traffic areas, it starts it, to- it starts. Mm, wadding up like a matted dog yeah it goes back the way it's supposed to be yeah yeah Yeah. and so you really don't have much and then they put all these goodies in carpet this uh scotch guard and anti this and anti that and stuff that's supposed to get you to basically brush the dirt off of it right and 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 all that's added on after the fact yeah yeah well the first time you clean your carpet all your goodies go away. Yep. So it'll get just as dirty as ever. <laughs> it'll get more dirty after you've cleaned it than it was before. And uh, that's because you've sucked all the, all the washed all the goodies out of the yep. carpet. Huh. So, you know, if you get your carpet cleaned, it's always a good idea to ask the fellow that's doing that or the lady that's doing that to uh, maybe apply a little scotch guard to it which is a spray Mm -hmm. and they'll put it on it and you got to let it dry because you walk on it while it's wet you're going to scotch guard your feet (laughs) so (laughs) and still have footprints (laughs) you got dirty footprints all the way you'll have dirty dirty footprints all across (laughs) the room but 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 that's it so when you go in now and and you're going to buy you some more carpet don't just think the the when you're feeling it, you know, the thicker it is, the better it is. Because uh-huh. they probably fuzzied that thing up really good and well, give you a cheap piece. You, I am, I am incensed. That you should be. <laughs> yeah, and you don't smell good either. I think <laughs> you're supposed to be six feet away. You're not going to notice that. Now I am. We are six feet away. Yeah, so imagine, imagine the amount of money being saved by people now that are actually social distancing on, on just deodorant alone. You know, you can use half as much and get the same same effect from it 
I don't believe I told that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh Lord! I uh, I don't get. You know, well, never mind. I'm not going there. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> we we need to get some call-ins here and some texts yeah, to yeah, get, get, get get on subject here yeah. and talk about stuff. We do. So. And that that uh, phone number is seven three one eight nine one six one six one. That'll put you right in the queue, as they say. And if you want to text us, we'd be more than happy to take it that way, too. 731-410-7560. Anything, uh, anything you have that uh, John can, can answer to help you get started on something or maybe finish uh, something that you started last week that you kind of stuck in the middle on. If you painted yourself into a corner, so to speak. That happened one time. You're kidding. No. No, no. I hope, it, you're, I hope you were painting a floor, not a wall. No. <laughs> it was a round room. I couldn't find the corner. <laughs> you're in one of those geodesic dome houses. This, this is a funny story. There was a there was an old painter, and we'll get into that. Let's, yeah, let's, let's take this phone call, and I'm going to tell a funny story. All, all right. right. Good morning and welcome. Hey, good morning, Jimmy Duke. Hello there. How are you? Let me, let me uh, hang on one second. Let me... Let me make a little maneuver here and get this thing like it's supposed to be. All right, now talk to me. You hey, there? Jimmy, it's Shannon Dunlap. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing, doing good. I got a question for John. He's here. The uh, the uh, shutters on your house, plastic shutters. Mine looks like they're just put in with a with a push in tack, for lack of a better term, a That's expandable right. plastic anchor type thing. Yeah. Are they are they really that simple to replace? Where you just clip that and put the others in? Are the new shutters already got holes in them, or do you have to match them up and drill your shutters out? Well, the thing you're gonna you're gonna find your new shutters will not have the holes in them for those little push-in clips. You will have to match them up. So if you simply just take your old shutter off. And assuming it's the same size as your new shutter, just lay the old one on top of the new one and then mark your holes where the other ones were. And then you can pre-drill them and then use those little push-in plastic nails, so to speak, and, and do that. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could put any kind of fastener up there, uh, just a long screw, uh, uh, and, and you may need a washer on it. And then you may have to touch up the heads of them to where... You don't see them if they're if they're colored, but they're not hard to do at all, and uh, it's a pretty simple procedure. On a siding house, does it just go through the the plywood? I guess underneath the siding. Yes, uh, as long as you get a good bite into that uh, OSB or plywood that's underneath that, they'll stay up there uh, just fine. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. I uh, appreciate your show, and I always enjoy listening to you. All right. Thank, thank, thanks for calling me in. Absolutely. That's uh, is easily done. 731-891-6161, and problem solved. There you go. I have a text that came in. Uh, it has nothing to do with shutters, but it's some good information. It says, there you go. cars and coffee this morning at the Coles parking lot from 8 to 11. Must be a little car show or something out there. Coles. That, Coles. That's out here in the Commons, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'll slide by there on the way home. Yeah, you yeah. like that stuff, don't you? I do. I like both coffee and cars. That's right. There I can you afford go. more coffee than I can cars, but mm. that's a different story. Give us a call this morning, 891-6161-410-7560 is the uh, text line number. John Allen is here to take your calls. Let's take about a minute and a half break right quick and uh, get some calls into the queue, and we will continue this morning on Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. S Community Services is a premier provider for individuals with disabilities. We're looking for caring, compassionate team members. Caregivers are the core of our company and are integral in supporting individuals with disabilities to participate in their communities and lead full and independent lives. We're now hiring full and part-time positions for our Jackson and Memphis, Tennessee locations. Receive a $250 sign-on bonus after 240 hours. That's only six weeks full-time. This is only for newly hired direct support caregivers and licensed practical nurses. 
resources. Now through September 30th, we provide opportunities for flexible schedules that allows employees to balance their work and personal lives. We offer comprehensive benefits including medical, dental, vision, matching 401k, short-term disability benefits, gym memberships, company paid life insurance, and parental leave. Now hiring, and you can receive a $250 sign-up bonus after 240 hours. DNS Community Services. Apply online at www.dscommunity.com. That's dscommunity.com. Sakura Japanese Restaurant invites you to lunch today for only $7.95. Busy day? No problem. Sakura delivers. Sakura Japanese Restaurant is Jackson's original sushi bar with over 75 selections of fresh cooked and fried rolls. Sakura recently introduced the new Chinese menu. Impress your friends, family, and business clients this season with a Sakura meal or stuff their stockings with Sakura gift cards. Jackson's original sushi bar is Sakura online and on Gary Chow's Drive next to Gold's Gym. We try to make it a different way to wake up in Jackson and West Tennessee every day, Monday through Friday from 6 until 9 a.m. It's Blue Suede Forever, live from the Dixie Cafe and the Old Country Store on the Talk of Jackson. Dedicated to the premise that from New Orleans, the Muscle Shoals, to Memphis, up through Nashville and Bristol, Tennessee, all the pop music of the world came from right through here. We play it, we talk about what's happening in our world, we try to get your day off to a positive start. Join us, Blue Suede Forever, Monday through Friday, 6 till 9 a.m. at the Talk of Jackson. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, and WKBL, Covington, News Talk, West Tennessee. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and release bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced Rehab and Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You be glad you did tricks of the trade name of the show it is a saturday morning in jackson and west tennessee and we welcome your calls for john allen this morning 731-891-6161 and the victory honda text line 731-410-7560 and we have a text on the uh, on the board now let's see you ready I'm ready. It says, John, I have old metal gutters that are now rusted through and are leaking a little water, but not all, uh, let's see, leaking a little water, but not all. Should I just take those down until I'm ready to put new gutters up or leave them? Thanks. It says drainage from the house is pretty good. Well, Obviously, if they've rusted, you've got galvanized gutters, the old kind, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe and they're probably in 10-foot sections. And uh, if they are not dripping water to where it gets your face boards wet behind it, you can probably leave them there until you're ready to replace them. Uh, of course, you can take them off, and if you've got a good drainage away from the house, and just let the water hit the ground, you'll be okay. Uh, Obviously, they don't go back with those anymore. They don't yep. make them anymore, except in commercial settings when you have to fabricate uh, larger gutters. So you'll be going back with a continuous aluminum uh, gutter, and uh, the only joint you'll have will be in the corners, and they seal those up pretty good. So, you know, it's uh, not that big an undertaking. So as long as you're still protecting your wood and it's not getting wet, You can leave them, but if the boards are getting wet, take them down before they start to deteriorate uh, your face of boards. All right. There you have it, Texter. Thank you. We appreciate you. Appreciate your call in. Let's see. Here's another text coming in on uh, right behind that one. About to install a heated floor, an electric mat in a five by nine master shower. Hey, we forgot that when we redid my shower, didn't we? Any, uh, any tips or brand suggestions? 
No, they don't do them the way they used to. They used to, they used to, those wires were embedded in a concrete layer and of a, and it just circled back and forth across the floor. Right. Now they have these mats that you lay down there, and then you can put your underlayment uh, right on top of it, and, and then your your tile. So you know, there's there's not that many brands out there, but what little exposure I've had to them in the last couple of years, I haven't seen a bad one. Uh, they're actually starting to come back. You're even seeing people up north of the Mason-Dixon line starting to put heated floors and have radiant type heating um, all through the house and also in the ceilings hmm. and uh, it's not a bad heat source it's just one of those things that you set it and you forget it you don't roll the thermostat on those things because the recovery time it's so slow but it's constant but yeah. it's very affordable so no uh, as long the the key I would say on on that mat is the installation uh, if you're doing it yourself and you understand it fine but if you are hiring that out make sure you get someone that knows the technology behind that watch where you nail so that you don't pierce any of those uh, shields on that wire and uh, I think you'll be all right so not too many ways to go wrong on that Hmm, very good. Very good. I, I didn't know whether they were even doing that sort of thing. That was kind of common for bathroom floors, you know, in a lot of areas. Uh, even, even around here, I, I ran into several homes that had had the bathroom floors heated. But uh, Well, I just had a little incident with a house in another city not too far away where uh, they had a huge tree fall on the house. Mm -hmm. And it cracked all the ceilings uh, in the house. And, and here comes the the insurance man, as they say. <laughs> and he says, and he writes his own estimate. She says, well, don't I need to get a, a, a contractor to come in here? He says, oh, no, we're going to settle this right now. So uh, very, very sure of himself, young yeah. whippersnapper. Yeah. He, yep. he, he had all the answers. So he uh, he writes this estimate, and the, the person didn't know any different. So they called me up, and they says, well, we've settled with our insurance company and need you to come by and see if you can do this. And I said, okay. So I go over there and I look at it. And I said, mm, no, we need to call this guy up and talk to him a little bit. She says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, he's he's got removing your half-inch sheetrock off the ceiling and putting it back up. She says, okay. I says, you don't have sheetrock. What do I have? I said, you've got wire lath and plaster. Oh, that's a little more expensive. And that's not the bad part. The bad part is you have radiant heating all in your house. It's wires all in it. She says, well, really? I said, yeah, and you know it's still working. See your thermostat on the wall over here? They just moved into the house. Yeah. And uh, I said, you just dial this thermostat, and you put it on the temperature that you want it, and that's what it'll be it's an right. old style of heating and we got a lot more money you got to ask for because he didn't figure that so I called him up yep and i got one of those uh do what <laughs> answers <laughs> i didn't know they did that answers yeah. and uh, i said yes this this house has radiant heating well you'll have to explain that to me mr allen well, I and of that. course <laughs> i did <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, better than that, I'll even take a piece of it down and show it to you. So we had a little seminar yeah, <laughs> job yeah, site yeah. and uh, got the lady properly taken care of because not only did she have that, that plaster and then the lath on top of that and then the, the brown coat and the finished coat, mm -hmm. that ceiling was about an inch and a half thick. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. So when you put, if you put a half inch sheetrock up there, you'd have a crack along the side of your walls that you could throw a good cat through yep. and uh, uh, that just wouldn't work. Of course, he was going to put a little crown mold on that. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. It, <laughs> uh, you got to got to put it back. They had something working. That's what they need. But they didn't yep. know what it was. Yeah. And then, then there was a, th and this one just floored me because I, I felt old after this conversation. <laughs> there was a guy that called me not long ago and he says, I need you to come out here and give me a price on my roof. I said, okay. What? He says, well, I had my adjuster out. And I said, okay. And he says, well, 
he needs another opinion. I said, for what? He says, well, he don't know what this is. I said, what do you mean you didn't know what this is? He said, well, you know, my house has got a sloped roof. I said, yeah. <laughs> Most of them do. <laughs> Most of them do. I said, well, I got gravel on top of it. I said, yeah. Well, he don't know what that is. I said, well, you've got a ballasted roof. I mean, it's hot tar, three layers of hot tar, and, and then the rock on top of it to, to protect it and hold the roof down. Right. Well, some of these new ones, they don't know what that is. And, and the book they go by, yeah. this, uh, one of the programs is called Xactimate. Oh. It's a good program. We use it. Yeah. But they don't have it in there. They really? Don't, they don't know what that is. Now I said, now, wait a minute. That hadn't been that long ago because we were still putting those on back in the 70s. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of the way I cut teeth when I was working uh, my first job with Mike Glennon's son. And, and he had a hot tar crew with a kettle, the whole deal. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't do that actual stuff. But I helped put the trim around, and I put repaired the decking and stuff like right. that. That's just so old school. You don't do that anymore. You didn't have to ride the mop. I didn't have to ride the mop. <laughs> that's exactly, and I'm glad because that oh, was hot. Man, that's nasty. That was yeah. a hot, yeah. hot job. Got a couple of texts coming in, uh, and uh, Texter, thank you for for that uh, that question. I haven't. Uh, I, that's a semi-flat roof then on on what you're talking about with the tar and gravel, right? Yeah, it's had yeah. about a number two, about a two pitch on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And exactly. Uh, it's a pretty little roof. Yeah, and and they're very serviceable, you know. Well, now, now that you're talking about it not being in your Xactimate or whatever the the program you use nowadays, I was thinking back. It it, it wasn't in. I don't think the flat roof was in the residential manual that that we used on the appraisal side. Right. But you could go over to the to the commercial manual and it would it was in there. That's true. You didn't find many uh, gravel roofs on resident houses. But the guy that built this house was an engineer, and uh, he wanted to put something on that last lasted, yeah. and it lasted almost 50 years. Oh yeah, and uh, they're hard to patch once you get a leak, find in the leak, because mm-hmm. you got to scrape all that gravel back and and look for the crack in the surface. But uh, it's just that's just another one of those lost arts, you know. Oh yeah, here's another text coming in on the text line. Phone line is open also nine uh, seven three one. 891-6161 says, does your company do exterior paint on homes? If not, who would you recommend? <clears throat> we do that. We do a lot of that. And uh, we've got several crews that will we'll do that. Be happy to take a look at it and uh, give you a price. Just give me a call at my office. Okay. Absolutely. You want to give them the number? Well, 427-1120 is go. my office number. And uh, I don't use this show to promote my services sure. i just talk about what i've done but you asked so i don't mind telling you that's exactly there right. you go exactly <laughs> right uh back on the uh, ballast ballasted roofs it says aren't they rather expensive they are now because <laughs> you can't find anybody to do it well that's true yeah but yeah they they were they were expensive compared to shingles but when you had a flat roof that was about the only choice you had because the the roofs they have now that replace those are torch down roofs or peel and stick roofs and yeah. kind of uh, rubber rubber membrane and, and rubber membranes yeah. and TPO and things like that where you're actually gluing things together or as they say welding them together and uh, they last a lot longer a ballasted roof you'd get maybe 15 20 years out of it but the closest thing to that back in the day you might get five or ten years, and people went with those type roofs because of the longevity, and there virtually no maintenance as long as you didn't have a leak. Right. But uh, there's a lot of options out there right now. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Phone number is seven three one eight nine one six one six one. You can dial directly in to talk to John Allen on tricks of the trade. And the text line is uh, is hot this morning, but you can get in, 731-410-7560. I, I want to finish my little story about that room we got painted into. Yes, go for that. Yeah, the round room. This was, well, no, it wasn't <laughs> no, I round. Know, it, I know. It, it was square, but <clears throat> but here you go. We had a had a rec room that had an outside door in it. Mm-hmm. And the, the painter was an older gentleman that I had. This has probably been 30 years ago. 
and uh, he he was putting polyurethane or we stained the hardwood floor and he just won't put polyurethane on it right so he started and uh, was very conscientious of, of what he was doing and he started on the far side, far side of the room and he wanted to work his way out to that outside door right so uh, he calls me up well actually the customer called me up because back then we didn't have cell phones <laughs> <laughs> and and it was uh, it was kind of funny because it went like this, Mr. John, you got a painter over here, and he needs some assistance, and he wants you to bring him another pair of shoes out of his work truck or a pair of socks. Okay. And I said, okay, what's going on with Cleo? <laughs> and uh, he says, well, he he painted him. He's coating this floor, and he's got all the way over to the back door, and he can't get out. I said, okay, why can't he get out? He says, well, he didn't ask me about that door before he started working to it, but we screwed that door shut <laughs> probably five years earlier, and it didn't open anymore. And, and Cleo didn't know that. So he done painted himself into a corner that had a door in it, but the door, but the didn't, door work. didn't work. So he had that beautiful floor that was glossed over. It was oh, it was nice looking, and he had to walk back over it. Oh man! So he he had already messed up his shoes and socks, <laughs> and was out there barefooted, and he, he he just wasn't used to doing that, and he couldn't walk outside because there was gravel everywhere, and I guess his feet were tender. So I had to bring him some shoes and a pair of socks to wear Man. so he could drive home <laughs> that night. That's kind of funny. That, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you go over you go over a slick poly floor and your sock feet, you get all those little uh, fuzzies. fuzzies off your sock. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get out of that floor. Yeah. You literally had to scrape it up and start yeah. over and then make sure that you couldn't tell yeah. where he had been. Yeah. Pardon me, ma'am, but you know your floor is growing hair. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You got a good case of fuzzies growing right oh, there. Oh man, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I want to go back to something you, you said earlier, and I'm 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 uh, I'm going to I'm going probably going to show my 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 true ignorance here as far as construction is concerned. We're talking about the 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 little heated grids that go in your in your in this case, the guy's going to put it in a in a walk-in shower or a bathroom shower or bathroom floor, whatever. And you said, yeah, they put them on the floors and they also put them in the ceilings. Yeah. Now. I always thought that heat rises and cold falls, right? Air. Yeah. Okay. So why would you put heated strips in your ceiling? Because your floor was concrete, and you couldn't put them in there. Okay. Yeah, they. It, radiant heat. You know, um, you had these back in the '60s, and even they had it around here. JEA had this, the so-called gold medallion homes. I remember all electric. All electric, mm -hmm. and uh, they would put some of this out. You had low voltage wiring, which never worked. It, uh, you know, you had 12 and 24 volt lights with little bitty wires going to everything. Right. And everybody used to mess up because they'd uns they'd have a bulb burn out, and they'd put a a regular bulb in it, and it wouldn't work hmm. because it was a 24 volt bulb. Okay. And uh, it. Those were those. That whole idea is gone. <laughs> yeah. You may find a gold medallion sticker on yeah. a house, but you'll find it's been rewired, reworked, and yeah, it's a whole lot more efficient. They've overcome. They have overcome. Yeah, yeah. They wore out that medallion real oh, quick. Man, I remember seeing those in houses—a little metal medallion, like on the side of the kitchen. Yeah, it was a good or, thing. Yeah, and, and back yeah. then, it was state of the art. Yeah. Yeah, that, that word will get you in trouble. <laughs> Every time. There's more lawsuits been filed over that word, state of the art. Oh, yeah. And especially when it comes to electronics and things of that nature, because state of the art may be that way today, but tomorrow there's something better. That's right. It may be a different state and a different art. Who knows? That's right. Who knows? Yeah. All right. Well, that, that cleared that. I, the only thing I could come up with in, in my limited knowledge was maybe it was a two-story house and you were using heat in the ceiling to radiate up through the floor on the second level. No, it uh, it it you you were right about the perception of you know hot air rise and yeah. all that, but once that house reached a certain temperature, mm -hmm. 
it, it stayed that temperature. You didn't roll the thermostats like right. you do nowadays. Oh, boy, and, uh, do we ever. But you just set it and forget it. Yep. And uh, that, that's the way it was. Speaking of uh, air moving up and down, uh, you mentioned this on on previous show uh, about ceiling fans. Is now it's about to become the time where we got to get up there and find that little switch on the side of that hunter fan hanging from the ceiling, and switch it the other way, which does what? It blows the air up instead of down. Okay. You know, uh, and you know, I bet there might be one out of a hundred that actually do that, mm -hmm. but. Uh, in case you don't know what we're talking about, on your ceiling fan, you know, everybody thinks a fan goes one direction. True. I mean, it blows down on you, creates a breeze, makes you cooler in the summertime. Right. But ceiling fans are just as important in the wintertime. But you don't want a breeze on you. You get that draft, and, and, and especially older people don't like that draft blowing down on them all the time. But if you'll go up there and with make sure the fan blades are not turning. Yes, don't turn it on yet. <laughs> but when it's dead still, reach up there to that little switch on the side and flip it, and it'll make the blade spin the opposite direction. Now, right. the importance of that is it blows the air up and out on your ceiling, and then it comes back down the walls. Yeah. And... Uh, and it, it circulates things real good, and you get the benefit of the air movement without the draft. And uh, it works real good, and, it, and it, it helps on your heating bill because you don't have the hot spots and the cold spots and all in the room. The more you can keep that air moving, the more comfortable you're going to feel inside. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, let me, let, me, let me take another tangerine down this other road, another tangent take off. off of that. Thermostats. Now, yep. Thermostats have changed drastically over the years. Back in back in our day, they had the little mercury switches in them, and the thing would oh yeah heat and move. Now they're all electronic. Yeah. Back then, I always remember my my mom or my dad both probably say, I'd, I'd see them in there with the little brush on the end of the Electrolux. Yep. Sucking the dust out from that thermostat. Yeah. So that it was getting an accurate reading of what the air was around. Yeah. Do we need to do that on these electronic ones? You'll get the tea waddle stew knocked out of you. I mean, <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. There's nothing to brush. That's what I thought, too. It, yeah. It, yeah. It, the, here's the deal. Now, here's a little tip I'm passing on to the listening that's, audience. Hey, that's what we do. If your heat and air doesn't work all of a sudden, maybe it's been just fine. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you wake up one morning or get up, and it's hot in the house, or in the winter, it's cold in the house. Right. And you go over there, and you flip the switch on the thermostat back and forth. You maybe set it down. Maybe it just not caught up with the uh, atmosphere around it, you know. Right. And it don't work. Before you call your heating and air professional, mm -hmm. save yourself a lot of money, and gently rock that thermostat cover back and forth and pull it straight out now when you pull it out mm -hmm. and turn it over you're going to find a battery in there yeah and that battery is probably dead i had to change mine the other day yeah, yeah. and if the display on the front of your thermostat is blank and nothing's on it you can't tell the temperature or anything chances are you got a dead battery which is normally either a some of them are just a, a double A battery. Some of them have a couple of triple A batteries, but uh, and, and and then you got to be careful mm -hmm. because when you pull that thing off, you'll see those little prongs in there. Yeah, you got to make sure you put them right back in where they belong and not get them twisted. So Makes be sense. careful when you're putting it back together so you don't mess up something uh, even we, more. I'm, I wasn't. If you're watching us on Facebook, and I was kind of had a you look like you're about to bust <laughs> over there. <laughs> It's because I get to see the text before anybody else does. So, uh -huh. uh, uh, listen, first, let's let's take this one first because the next <laughs> the next two may take some expl explanation. It says, "I know that HVA systems used to be built with dehumidifiers in them. Are they still built that way, or can you special order those?" An air conditioner is a dehumidifier. Okay. So there's nothing extra you buy if you got an air conditioner. It's, it's taking the humidity out of the air. Right. Now, if you want a humidifier, 
product where you're adding moisture to the air, that is something you'll have to buy separately, and you probably only use that in the wintertime. Right. So okay. that that's that one. Yeah, I, uh, we talked about that maybe two or three weeks ago because I, I had the same opinion that the texter did, and I was thinking about adding a humidifier, mm-hmm. which back a long, long time ago when, when we first had a, as I was a kid, when we got in a house that actually had central heat and air for the first time, we had to put one on there because of my asthmatic situation. Oh, yeah, we got, did the same thing with it, our Yeah, kids. it got too dry for me. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, you added a, a humidifier and not a dehumidifier. Thank you, Texter. <laughs> this uh, this one may have come from your household. Uh-oh. It, say, it says, what's tea waddle? Please <laughs> explain, Dad. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's, there's another one from another, uh, from another Texter here, and it says, it says, uh, I've had tea diddle stew in my work projects many times. <laughs> what my, is a tea waddle, he uh, asked. My, my grandmother, uh-huh. Granny, we Granny. called her Granny. She was proud of that name, Granny. Yep. Oh, yeah. You didn't call her, didn't call her Berthy. Bertha Lulu was her name. Ooh, yeah, but Granny's but good. That, that's right. <laughs> Granny, she liked Granny. Well, Granny, you know, she had her little sayings, you mm-hmm. know, and oh, yeah. she had things. So if. If you got shocked, mm-hmm. you know, you, you you crossed a wire or you were plugging in something, sometimes, especially as she would put it, if you were of the female persuasion, you would wet on yourself. Ah. But she would not say that. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, She no. would just say, Johnny, that knocked the tea waddle stew out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, hey, here's somebody that knows because the texture says, I've had it knocked out of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have, too. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll make you do things. I'll tell you what, the electricity hits you hard enough sometimes you invent new words. There you go. Yeah, and they're usually short. That's like right. four letters yeah, long. Yeah, four. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> All right, we've got one more text, and then we're going to, have to take another commercial break, as that's, uh, that's what we do to pay the bills around here. Uh, okay, this one is from the Ghost Poet. Uh-oh. The Ghost Poet is hard at it this morning. It says, my attic has low beams with hanging nails all about. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it a John Allen job because he loves to work and shout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, Ghost. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that this morning. Need a good laugh on a Saturday. We're going to take about two minutes to hear from our sponsors, and we shall return. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. This is WTJS. XMC, known for excellence in office solutions, prides itself on delivering high-quality products and services with a uniquely personal approach. XMC provides sales, leasing, service, and supplies, and is an authorized sales agent of Xerox. Xerox offers innovative document solutions, including printers, digital presses, multifunction devices, and digital copiers. Visit XMCINC.com today and learn how Xerox and XMC is expanding its portfolio to help boost worker productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs. This is Tammy Reed with Hickman Realty. Buying and selling a home is your largest investment. Why would you trust that to just anyone? With over 300 properties sold in 2019, no other real estate agent or team sells more real estate in West Tennessee than the Reed Nelson team. Time-tested experience is the key to getting you the most money for your home. Put your largest investment in the trusted hands of the Reed Nelson team. Call me today, 616-6000-664-1006. Visit our website at reedteam.com. Nashville's best variety show, The Token Show, is coming to Freed Hardeman University Friday, December 4th. As seen at the Ryman, The Token Show will bring you comedy, world-class vocalists, and Nashville's best session players before you hear from star of film and television, Gary Sinise. 
Be part of this one-of-a-kind holiday experience at the FHU Benefit Dinner. Visit FHU.edu for tickets and sponsorships. Hey, this is Jimmy Leach inviting you to tune in to my show, The Investigator, every Saturday morning at 9, right here on the Talk of Jackson 93.1. My friend Brad McCoy and I talk about current headlining cases, how law enforcement really works, cold cases, serial killers, and much more. Plus, we'll have special guests like former state attorney generals, private detectives, gang experts, sheriffs and former sheriffs, chiefs of police, and many others. The Investigator with me, Jimmy Leach, every Saturday morning at 9 on the Talk of Jackson 93.1. Yes, indeed, and you can hear the Jimmy Leach Show with the investigator himself coming up right after John Allen's Tricks of the Trade every Saturday morning here on 93.1. We're glad to have you along with us, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or streaming or on-air radio. It's uh, we're, we're glad that you were there. Text line 731-410-7560 and the uh, phone line this morning. We'd love to talk to you, 731-891-6161. Here's John. You mean we are really live? We are live. We're not, like, delayed? No. So if we say something wrong, it's already out there? Yep, yep, we just bit it. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, here comes a here comes a, a phone call as we speak. Let me okay. get let me get All this right. and let me get this and then the queue. Go for it. Good morning and welcome. Are you there? Caller, you with us? We spooked them. Yep, right, yep, they dropped out. It says terminated now, so give us another try. 731-891-6161. John Allen's here, Tricks of the Trade, the name of the show. We've got about 10 minutes left in today's session. Well, we can come up with something here. Oh, You know, yeah. uh, light bulbs. Oh, here we go. We're going to hear Charlie Lumens is coming no, back in the door. No, okay. no, we're finding <laughs> out that people are learning more. I don't like it, but yeah. they're learning more about Lumens and Kelvins. The thing of it is they're forgetting the way it used to be. Watts. Well, Watts is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Watts is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Light what? bulbs. What? Oh, that's yeah. what. Okay. Yeah, what? We okay. Got, we've got a phone call. Okay. Well, all right. Well, let's take a phone oh, call. Just tell Mr. Lumen to sit down now. Okay. For a all right. Here we go. We'll do that. Let me, let me get him in the, in the board here, and you should have it. Go for it. Good morning and welcome. Hey, John. Hey. You there? When I'm making stew, and I got my pot it's on the stand. You have the gas regulator. Who can work on that? Okay, wait a minute. I've, I've missed something. You've got a pot on a what now? A stew pot on a stand. On the stand. And you need somebody to work on the gas regulator. Okay. Call. I'm going to tell you to call uh, Garrett Plumbing and ask for uh, Mike Van Dyke. Mike Van Dyke. I'm, I'm, okay. not, I'm not kidding now. That's his name, Mike Van Dyke. And Mike has an awful lot of knowledge of old school stuff, and I mean that in the most respectful way, in that he has an extreme amount of knowledge of burners and boilers and things of that nature, and he can get that regulated for you. But now he's going to wonder how in the world you found out that he could do that. <laughs> So, uh, but if you'll give him a call over there and just ask for Mike, and uh, uh, they might be able to walk you through that. Where they located at? Do what now? Where are they located at? Where are they located? They're on Miller Drive, and the phone number is 668 3339. That's Garrett Plumbing and Heating. Yep. Good folks. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, caller. Yeah. We appreciate that. That's just, uh, how easy it is to get in and to talk to John directly. And uh, let's see. I think uh, nope. That's the one we just had. Okay. Uh, now back back to where back to where we. Oh wait a minute. I got a text coming in. It says okay. I've recently seen a few subterranean homes. What is the advantage of those? Oh, the utility bill is kind of low. You know, it, it, you're, you're, you're living in the ground, mm-hmm. and provided you don't have a moisture problem, heating and cooling is a cinch because once it gets where you want it, it pretty well stays there. 
And along with those subterranean homes, most of them you got to mow the roof because <laughs> they're dirt. That's true. <laughs> and uh, the the they were kind of popular back in the 70s. People were, were bunkering in, so to speak, yep. and finding ways to conserve energy. And the only problem that I knew of that people had with them is if they started leaking or if they were continually damp. And once you got that problem uh, resolved and got the humidity levels constant, uh, they were pretty good. Yep. You, you didn't have too many windows to look out of. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I have had a, appraised a couple of those, which is very difficult to do because when you're looking for comparable sales to a house that's in the side of a hill, they don't they don't exist very often. But uh, got to call Mr. Gopher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yourself a real gopher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I always thought uh, that that'd be difficult for for me, being a bit claustrophobic, to uh, to deal with. Well, it's it's kind of a mindset, but I mean, think about it. They're easy to heat and cool. You don't ever have to paint them on the outside. True. And if they're dry, you're, you're okay. They're, you don't have to hear about your neighbors yelling because you yep. can't hear them. That's true. Uh, it, it, it's not a bad process. No, no I'm, I'm not putting them down. I just say, you know, that, that uh, you know, so, I mean, you, you get up in the morning, you look out the window and say, oh, get up, honey, the mud's coming up. Well, yeah, but, but <laughs> think of it this way. Now, it's, it's nighttime. What good are windows anyway? This is true. And when the lights this go out, it's as dark yeah. in a house above the ground as it is on under the ground. Unless you live on a corner with a street light. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and they recently put in some lumens out there on my corner. Uh-huh. And it, uh, I mean, you could walk the yard at night pretty much and see where you're going. you yeah. got a blue light flashing out in your neighborhood right now. Do I really? Yeah. I haven't noticed that. One of them little uh, yeah. cameras from the police department. I, whoop, is it's not pointing toward me, is it? <laughs> no, not yet, but I'm going to keep them advised. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't. I didn't know where about where is it? You you remember the street that it's on? Uh, what's that one that if you went from your house and went north across uh -huh. the street? Yeah. When it hits Forest Forest Point. point point yeah it's right in that area right there i saw okay. it flashing the other day oh. which makes me wonder if the police are wanting to know what's going on why do they have to make you know that you got a camera out there watching them that's just I, dumber it's, than it's, it's probably some kind of a legal thing you know otherwise it would be illegal surveillance or something like that you think don't, so i don't I'm, I'm guessing you know my legal opinion is what you just worth what you just paid for it <laughs> that much huh? that much <laughs> But I don't, yeah, but I've seen, yeah, you see those lights all, all the time all over town. I'm, I'm going to run out of time before I get to tell my light bulb story. All right, you got about three and a half minutes. Tell all me. right, here we go. Okay, back before we got to lumens and all these uh, new light bulbs you had out there, the mm -hmm. if you had a light outside that put out a lot of light and you lighten up your yard, you had what was called a quartz light fixture. Yes. Had that little skinny bulb about four inches long, about the size of a pencil. And boy, if you ever touched it, you'd never touch another one again. Yep. It got just red hot. Mm -hmm. Expensive lighting, because it was total resistance lighting. And uh, and they wore out real quick. You were constantly changing those bulbs out. But do you know why you were constantly changing those bulbs out? No, because I have one on the front of my house. And for that very reason, aside from the fact that it's hard to get to, that's it's, it's been out for about two years now. Well, you know, any kind of light bulb except a quartz bulb, mm -hmm. you'll just take the lid off the front of it and mm -hmm. you'll reach in there. And, right. you know, it's it, it's on a spring. You kind of yep. go to one side and then mm -hmm. you take the bulb out. Right. And you did it with your fingers. Yes. That's your problem. Yeah, because, yeah, and it tells you that on the wrapper, if you ever get to that point, don't touch it with, with your bare, bare skin. Fingers, because the oil on your skin will create a hot spot, mm -hmm. and that will prematurely burn your bulb out in a matter of a couple of weeks. So I always take you a piece of paper, piece of cardboard, piece of toilet paper, right. anything that will create a barrier, and put it on that bulb, and then put it in. And then it'll light up and it'll it'll be okay. Just don't ever touch that bulb. Yeah. 
And uh, sometimes they'll tell you that, and sometimes they won't. Yeah, but most guys are going to read that after they've done it anyway. And That's your problem. No, wrong. you you just gave it away right then, Jim. <laughs> guys don't read. This is true. Maybe you did. <laughs> <laughs> now, the ladies may read that and see it, but yep. very few, they'll just pull the wrapper off and go grab yep. it and stick it in. Well, the last one I did, I remember distinctly. In fact, I've still got one in my storage room that I haven't put in yet. But they usually come packaged with a little bitty thin, about a one-by-one-inch piece of styrofoam. And I think that is probably in there for a reason, to use that to grab the bulb with when you put it in. Huh. So, but did that's, I know that when I put possible. it in, or did I even matter at that point? Mm. You know, yeah, but you're right. They they will, they get a hot spot and they blow out, and then you got to go climb that ladder again. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of those out there, but those bulbs are getting expensive. Are they? They're about seven bucks a piece right now when you can find them. I think I put mine on eBay and yeah. make a little money on it. <laughs> Once you put a put a burn down one on eBay, some nut will buy it. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Just tell them it's 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 not really burned out. It's just a different patina. Yeah, it's repositioning. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. Oh, have mercy. Gently have mercy. used light yeah. bulbs. By the way, that's on my list to, to uh, as soon as I can get my toolbox open to find your phone number. <laughs> I'm, that's good. I'm going to call you at about replacing that, that, that fixture. And I got another little project out in the backyard I need you to look at. But we'll talk about that off the air. We don't, though. We do have one more call here. Let's, let's get this. Hang on, Texter. Let's see if we uh, call her. We can get you right in right now. Go for it, John. All right. Good morning and welcome. All right. You talking about underground homes? You yeah. can forget that because I figured that my last home is going to be underground in a box with no windows. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to have one, aren't they? <laughs> that, that's what they, that, in the pet world, that's what they call your forever home. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thank, thank you, caller. We we appreciate that. That's uh, that's a good way to end the show. I, I never thought about that. No, but that is. Yeah. And I, I know a few areas of land's got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> One time true. user. That's got a zero <laughs> lot line for sure on that's those right. things, isn't it? It's time for, for us to slide on out of here for this Saturday. So anything you want to say in, in, in wrapping up, we'll do it again next Saturday, if not. Yeah, we'll just be back next Saturday, and we'll just start all over again with a few little stories and tales and might throw a few facts in there just to mess everybody up. There you go. John Allen's Tricks of the Trade every Saturday morning from 8 until 9 here on 93.1. And coming up next, it's Jimmy Leach, the investigator. Stay tuned for that. We are News Talk for West Tennessee.